Dubai. A jewel in the Emirati Desert. A city risen from shifting sands. Three, two, one, now. Great nations from opposing hemispheres are set to meet in the middle. And go toe to toe in a brand new environment. Here we go, here we go. Jimmy Sloan, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? Come on, come on, come on, blast it back now. Okay, let's go. No, 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 no. Welcome to Dubai. Hello and welcome as the world's number one sailboat racing league tackles a new frontier in the Middle East with the Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas. The Middle East may not be a traditional competitive sailboat racing venue, but it's starting to make its mark this weekend as the state-of-the-art sail GPF 50s and the world's top yachtsmen and women come to town. Alongside Emily Nagel and Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris. And already in early practice for race weekend, Stevie, they have been putting on quite the spectacle. Well, yesterday we saw some really good sea breeze conditions here, light, steady winds, and it's a short, short race course. Can't emphasize how tight this course is going to be for the crews out there. And what we saw was it made the starting absolutely vital, very aggressive off the start line. When we get into the race, there's an awful lot of boat-on-boat -boat action, so expect to hear a fair bit of Chief Umpire Craig Mitchell as the crews are going to be going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Great Britain yesterday, well, they were starting well. They're a little bit slow. Have they been able to find that boat speed over? overnight and the story of the day well we're on board with them here it was the Spanish lacking confidence I think so far this season Geordie admitted that himself but they put on the performance of the day they won the day big smiles on the Spanish boat celebration but they know it's today that counts will they be smiling after racing today well the Kiwis in early getting a little bit of rugby practice in ironic there as Peter Burling and company get their boat ready for today's action remember there are three races today all fleet boats will be out taking part in that, and then tomorrow, four races with three fleet races, and then, of course, the final race will be the podium race with the top three point getters going head-to-head-to-head. -to -head -to -head. Right now, we sit it down on the water, the fourth member of our broadcast team. Here is Olympic silver medalist Lisa Darmanin with much more from Dubai. We have a stable winds and flat water for an ideal race track today. And it's going to be a great show just metres away from those crowds gathering on the seawall. Winds are currently 16 kilometres per hour from the northwest and with some good gusts up to 24 kilometres per hour. Water temperatures are quite high here and the reports from the teams is that the boat feels grippier to the water so they can fly faster higher, they can fly higher and they can go faster. So it's going to be an exciting day of foiling around Dubai. All right, thank you, Lisa. Much more from you a little later on. So let's take a look at the standings after six events here in season three. The two-time reigning and defending champions, Australia on top, four points clear of New Zealand. And then it's France sitting in third, nine points back. Great Britain and Canada round out the top five. Denmark and the USA still in the running, but they've got work to do and a tough season three for Spain and Switzerland. Australia narrowly holds onto their lead going into the second half of the season, but they do not have the same superiority that they had in previous seasons. And when we analyze the season so far, it's clear that seven of the nine team fleet could still get to that final podium race to decide the season three champions. And remember, it's not just about winning. It's also about avoiding bad results, Stevie, because they will quickly send a team down the scoreboard and put you right out of the top three. Well, Australia top the points, and they've got the most podiums as well. Their worst place is a fifth. So even without the string of wins we saw last year, they're consistently earning good points. New Zealand, same number of wins, one less podium, but they haven't quite got that same consistency. The two sixth place finishes are cutting their points. France had that eighth in Bermuda, but since then their worst been a fifth. They're really contending now thanks to that consistency. Well, Great Britain, what happened to them in Copenhagen really hurt them, earning just two points. If you average their points 
and gave that to them, though, they'd be up in second, so they're right in the mix. However, the surprise of this group for me is France, and they really, really were the stars of the show last time in Cadiz. France have been consistent all season with new helm Quentin Delapierre. With top five finishes, they pushed hard for the podium in Copenhagen. Impressive from De La Pierre. He turns the boat away again. Oh, it's a big match race down here. Content De La Pierre pushing the Danes out wide. France have really focused in on securing that second place. Canton De La Pierre, huge improvements for them. Confidence grew event by event. And it was in Cadiz where they pulled the trigger for their shot at the podium. Wow, look at the French off the line. What a performance. And they've made the final. Great style for Delapierre, but look at the speed on the Australian. He's going to hold the inside. Delapierre's going to have to follow. Look at the American bow there. He flies too high. Oh, no. Massive moment, France. Oh. Separated by just a few meters with the finish line there. Who will get the win as they come to the line here oh. in Spain? Oh. And it will be France getting their first victory in Sail GP St. Magnifique. Oh, Alain Fleur. What a race. <laughs> I think it was a huge challenge for me after the Olympics. You guys uh, give me the chance to recover. Big thanks to you for this. We have to push hard for, for the rest of the season. And again, if we look into the numbers in the middle of the point score, we can see why the next three teams headed by Canada are still well in the running here in season three, Emily. Canada started the season well with two podiums, but then scored poorly until Cadiz when they turned it around to score a valuable seven points with that fourth overall. Now, with five events to come, the question must be whether they can keep the high scores coming. Two podiums are perhaps flattering Denmark because otherwise it's a tale of poor scores, including a couple of sixth places and an eighth. As for the USA, early poor results aside, having four season points deducted for a collision in Saint-Tropez drops them two places. Avoiding that would have them looking better overall, just, just behind Great Britain. Jimmy Spittle's been patient with his new team early in the season. Taking his time to develop and nurture talent despite the poor results. Just on the finish line, the French roll over the top. That's last place for the United States. It all came together in Saint-Tropez. They gave a masterclass in changing gear, from strong wins on day one to marginal foiling on day two. <laughs> Jimmy Spithill and the Americans have claimed the victory here at the Range Rover France Sale Grand Prix. The United States' trump card is Jimmy Spittle. He never backs down, trusts his team, and is the king of comebacks. Watch this space. Phil Robertson is no stranger to taking on a new team and mixing up the pecking order. Not bad, eh? He came firing out of the blocks early on, making two finals. He's been known for his fiery charisma in the heat of the moment. What a reckless animal! With Canada, he's changed, showing his calm and collected side when it's going wrong. Copy that, thank you. Pressing. Coming up, guys. Now it's coming up again. Canada has included one member more than any other. Their strategist is vocal, delivering the right information at the right time. Georgia's strategy for the Canada Sail GP team is really paying off. Painting a picture of the race course to minimise mistakes and maximise overtaking opportunities. Let's not forget Denmark, a team that's proven their ability to make two podiums. Will they do it again as they fight for critical season points? Large crowds expected all weekend here in Dubai for the Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas as Sail GP makes their first foray into the Middle East. Before we go racing, let's get a course map from Stevie Morrison. 
Flying fast on the foils is the key to a good start. It's a straight line drag race to Mark 1. The higher you fly the boats, the faster you'll go. At Mark 1, we can see the first split in the fleet. The boats will sail off in different directions as the teams choose to sail to the side of the course that they think will get them quickest to gate 2. At the gate, they have a big choice to make. They can turn left or right. The leading boats will be looking to select the best side of the course with the most favourable wind. The turbulent air means the boats in the pack have a much harder choice to make. Remember, sailboats don't sail fast unless they're sailing at an angle to the wind, so we'd see them zigzag their way around the course, looking for that fastest path. At each gate, you have the opportunity to gain or lose. The legs are shorter than the Burj Khalifa is tall, so this course here in Dubai is very, very short. It's going to pressurise the manoeuvres of the crews as they battle hard in the race to finish first in front of the fans on the shoreline. So you are up to speed and we are ready to go under 90 seconds away. The course for race one is seven legs, axis is 337, wind is approximately 15 kilometers per hour. Race manager Melanie Roberts giving the important information. So Stevie, as we come up with a minute to go, you see everyone getting into position. We've seen in the past as New Zealand has gone to the back and tried to gunshot their way into the line. Such a small course, so is that possible today? Well, it's all about getting onto the foils and finding that bit of space. So we can see New Zealand a bit more conventional here. We're watching Great Britain coming in right-hand side of screen. And let's draw our eyes to that pole position. That's where the cruiser want to get that blue triangle towards the right-hand side of our screen. That's the favoured place to start the race. We can hear the voice of the Swiss boat at the moment in the background. Nathan Outridge on board as a strategist today. But in there, left-hand side of screen, Switzerland, New Zealand, already up on the foils, coming back to the line. 29 seconds to go. Great Britain only just turned back. They look slow at the moment, but it might be not too bad for them. Here we go. But the Kiwi boat diving through a gap. Who's got their timing right? The New Zealand boat trying to get round below Great Britain, but Great Britain has control. He's heading for the pole position spot, and it's going to be timing now. Now watch for the light to turn white and we'll see a good start. We've got all the boats coming in fast. Here we go. Wow, <laughs> Switzerland on the money. All the boats on the line there and Switzerland, they're fast. They're going to have the fastest angle to Mark 1, but I think Canada might be able to fend them off. Robertson, the starting master, can he lead at Mark 1? Runners of three now. Calm conversations as they approach mark number one. This is race one of three today, day number one of the Dubai Sail Grand Prix. That was the voice of Phil Robertson we heard there. We're just going to go one and in. He wants to try and simplify it. The advantage of being out in front, Todd, is you can make simple decisions. And Phil Robertson, he knows he wants to try and do as minimum manoeuvres as possible. Kiwis are the first one to make the turn. An entry speed of 47 kilometers an hour. That should be fine for a foiling maneuver. And Canada, great first turn there. Spin the boat away. And here we go. Not the breeziest day. So the speeds are down around that 40 kilometer an hour mark. We've also got those miles per hour there for those of you watching from the US. New Zealand doing well, though. Look at our ladder lines here. New Zealand crew, Peter Burling, he's found some win. He was the first to turn away, but he's found space. Gain for New Zealand at the moment, and when he comes back to the group at gate two, he's going to have the right of way. 130 metres, Todd, for Canada already. It's going to be a comfy race for them, I think, from here. Well, we've heard from those down on the water, Lisa Darman and Russell Coots. Everyone has said the start is going to be key. Can't emphasize enough how small this course is, Stevie. So if you get control of this race early, you've really put yourself in the catbird seat. Rich get richer, and you can see Robertson able to do exactly what he wants to do. Calm comms, Chris Draper, Georgia Llewellyn of France feeding the information. Contant de la Pierre is going to follow him round, and then it's going to be tight, I imagine, in the bunch after this. And Australia having their issues sitting in ninth place, the two time reigning to defending champions. Here comes the rest of the fleet. New Zealand now into the picture, currently in third. They'll split the course with Switzerland. Remember, Seb Schneider now driving for the Swiss with Nathan Outridge as the strategist. Amber, what is this no camper, mate? All right. 
to, to boundary and at 40 yeah. you can get it before the tag. Let's get to 40. It's like having a school game. teacher in the background okay, there, yeah. isn't it? Nathan Aldridge <laughs> telling them to get the wing set up right, telling yeah. them to find the angle. It's so interesting they've got that strategist. But it looks like Nathan may have found them a little bit more wind with <laughs> turning right at the, at the bottom because okay. the French and New Zealand are all off the foils. New Zealand, they've seen Switzerland, there, they agree. Yep, that could have been painful. USA gets around. They're currently sitting in sixth place. As we've seen in the past events, you've got to keep yourself in that top five, Stevie. You don't want to let it all come down to the final race on Sunday. That's consistency is key. Jimmy Spiddle knows that. And we can see he's going well. But look up the screen. The boats are struggling to foil now, Todd. The wind has dropped off a little bit. And it's all about trying to find the wind to get up on the foils. Green on Canada. Expect them to pop on the foil soon. When you see the top of the mast turn green, that indicates they're fast enough to be foiling. Fly time down to 73% on Canada here, and Switzerland not much better at 80. These conditions are really tricky for getting up onto the foils. We see them in the foils in the straight lines, but the maneuvers are crucial in trying to keep that speed. Like three of seven, race one of three today, Saturday in Dubai, and it is Canada in control of this race with France sitting in second place. Surprising to see two of the heavy hitters, Stevie, with Australia and Great Britain mired in the back of the pack in seventh and eighth. I think it's going to be a story of the weekend. If you don't get off the start, it's going to be really, really hard for you to get yourself into the race. Canada, good start. Contant de la Pierre, full of confidence after that performance, of course, in Cadiz. But right now, Canada look pretty good, and they're sailing smoothly up the course. We've got the rideites here on the top left. A lot of the teams showing negative numbers. That's showing that they aren't foiling at the moment. The rest of the teams that are positive, we're looking at close to around the one meter mark. We've got warm, flat water here, which makes it a lot easier for the boats to foil when there is enough wind speed. Okay, so it's marginal whether we're fast enough to pop on the foils. They're just quick enough. It's green at the top of the mast, but they need to watch out for New Zealand. It's going to be tight between France and New Zealand, but Canada, well, he's sailing away. Here we go, background, watching it, right-hand side of screen. New Zealand have the right of way. France needs to make a decision. Probably just about okay, Todd. He had to be clear ahead, and he was. And at gate three, it's looking good for Canada. So Canada, with plenty of room to maneuver at gate number three, decide to go to the left-hand side of the course. Hey, Skip, Billy. Yeah. Everyone's following here. Yeah, two, one, coming down. Angle. Andrew will come fast here. Now I'm watching it. Wow. Stevie, they did a fantastic job there. Yeah, it was a nice smooth rounding, and they're talking about how smooth the course is. Boundaries coming, France coming in. Where's New Zealand? Should come in from the right of speed, right of screen, sorry. France need to be confident they can make that left turn. They can, and it's starting to spread out now. We can still see Australia at the back of the pack, but Great Britain, they're creeping up to fifth at the moment. They found some space. We can see them in the middle of our screen, and Great Britain now fast enough to foil. They're back in the race. Penalty Australia, relative oh, Spain, oh, 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 uh, windward boat not keeping clear. Chief umpire Craig Mitchell doling out the penalty to Australia, and they've already had their problems. Currently sitting in eighth place, so left to drop back behind the ninth place Spanish boat. Yep. Tight here. Switzerland has the right of way. They can turn left if they want to. Will they carry on ahead? They will. That's going to give Denmark space to turn away. Good news for Tehested and Denmark. He should have a smooth rounding here. Switzerland are back in the pack now, yes, Todd. It's going to get hard for them from here. And coming away in two. Canada showing a 25-second lead over the French team behind them. Yep. Yep. Look at it, 43 so kilometers an hour and aiming yep. straight at the next gate as well, top of our screen. Denmark at the bottom here, they're in fourth. That's a nice comeback by Nikolai Sehested, and he's got a lovely bit of space. No boats near him. They can sail their own race. Plenty of space, but he's sitting in fourth place. And look at the distance between him and first. Phil Robertson in Canada. They currently sit fifth overall in the standings, 14 points back of Australia. But right now, they are dominating this first race here in Dubai. Top left here, we can see 19 kilometers an hour of wind which does mean that the team should now be foiling more consistently around the course. And look at that, Todd, on the left-hand side. Yesterday's two top teams in practice, Australia and Spain, over a kilometre behind the Canadian boat. Doesn't that just show you how tight the racing is, I suppose, and how, uh, what's a practice day mean? 
Three. Means nothing to Canada right now because they have the lead. This is the first race of three on Saturday and then four more races tomorrow. France currently sitting in second place, winners of the last event. France sits in third overall, just nine points back of the Australians, and this would be a great opportunity for them. If they could back up their performance in Cadiz, they would move up that leaderboard. There we go, these yellow lines here, that's the lay line, so that suggests that if you're inside there, you're going to be able to make it straight to the next gate with no more turns, and we can see every time you turn the boat, you lose speed, it's high risk, New Zealand just about on the foil, but Denmark, what a brilliant leg here by Nikolai Sehested, he looks like he's going to move past New Zealand, really accurate sailing by the Danish, and all these boats are going to be very, very slow after this mark. Great work by Sehested by taking that space at the top of the last leg. He got more space, able to do less turns and keep the speed up. Really light winds here, Todd. The crews need a reset. We can see them moving the other side of the boat, trying to keep the boat hull in the air. Switzerland now third to sixth in the blink of an eye. The teams on the top right sat down in the water right now, stuck in no wind. There we go, we see the boat start to manoeuvre here. It's so slow in these light wind boat airs. Looking back at the previous leg, we can see that the Danish, how they moved up into that third position with only one manoeuvre in that downward leg. Canadians showing us how it's done, though, with 43.8 kilometers an hour average speed and the shortest distance sailed. And there they are, out in front. Canada running away with this race number one. This is like five of seven. Their owner, Fred Pye, watching on, a smile on his face as his squad is just putting on a clinic here in Dubai. Georgia, I think one of the interesting things when you're out in front is you need to be sure that there's no boats going to be coming up the leg that you could infringe. So it's important for Georgia and all those strategists to have the head out of the boat, watching out for the other boats, because they're going to be in places you don't expect them to be today. On leg five of seven here in race number one with the breeze dipping below 15 kilometers an hour. It's Canada, France, New Zealand, the top three, but it is all Canada all the time here in this first race. New Zealand in that third place position trying to fend off Denmark, then it's Great Britain who have moved up from 7th to 5th, Switzerland in 6th, and the USA in 7th, with Australia and Spain having all kinds of issues on the crowd course today. 360 metres ahead now for Canada. Actually feels like there's a little less pressure out here now. I think that must have been a little minute ago from Phil because it's certainly looking like a lot less pressure out there. But the Canadians, well, when you're in front, no one in your way, no one between you and the wind. And some of these big wing sails they've got today, 29 kilometers, that's the engine of the boat, huge wing sail, but it blocks the wind. So if you're in someone else's way, you're giving them less wind. When your wet Canada is out on your own, clear wind, you've got all the power you want. And look, it's just turning into more boat speed. 46 kilometers now, Spain, top of the screen, 12, and they're just dropping back. Yesterday's winners, well, it's a tough day so far. Let's keep an eye, uh, an eye on the British team here, sailing at quite a good angle direct towards the mark. They're not quite sailing as fast as the other two teams, one hull in the water, but trying for that shortest distance possible. Trying to limit the damage is Ben Ainsley and Great Britain as they currently sit in fifth place. They sit in fourth place overall, 10 points back the leaders, Australia. Gonna be tight here. Great Britain has the right of way. Denmark must keep clear. Looks like Denmark are gonna try and turn right in front of them. They do. They're gonna turn, block the wind, shut the door on Ainsley. But where are New Zealand off to? They're sailing a lot of extra distance here, and that's the game. Do you minimize the distance, which might mean sailing a bit slower? But you can see Denmark and Great Britain are nearly sailing straight up the ladder line. 20 kilometers an hour, nearly twice the speed, but they're sailing a lot further on board the French boat. I'm tempted to just stick in this mode and try and lay the left gate. Well, it looks like it's gone well for you, Ben. That's what he's done. He sailed it straight up the course, a bit slower, exactly like Emily said, less distance, and that's paid off for him. He looks like he's going to be up to fourth. 
Burling and New Zealand, wow, they're trying to be fast and loose, but they're sailing too much distance at the moment. Content Delapierre in France, they slide into second place, Cody, right in front of Denmark and Nikolai Sehested, hold right in front of Great Britain and Ben Ainsley. So it's Canada, France, Denmark, Great Britain, New Zealand, the top five, and then the fleet really spaces out. Wow, and look at the top of the course, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. That is Canada going around the next gate. Well, the final gate as well, Todd. So this is just a little, little showboating run to the finish here. <laughs> Their owner, Fred Pye, up on his feet. Definitely worth the trip all the way from Canada to Dubai to see this in race one. A bit cheeky from Chris Draper there. What are they all doing back there? A bit of confidence from the wing trimmer on board the Canadian boat. But here we go, in the pack, it's going to be really tight. New Zealand, they have found a way past Great Britain. Who can stay on the foils? It's going to be crucial. First boat to fly here could snatch third place at the bottom of the course. We can see here they've got between 15 and 20 kilometers now of breeze, depending on where they are on the course. The Danish on the right-hand side of the screen with about 40, and the British slightly less pressure, so slightly less speed as well. Crucial to get every gust they can and try and get every point before this final reach the finish. So with Canada securing the victory, it is now the battle for second, third, and fourth. And Stevie, those points are so valuable. We've talked about it. Three more races tomorrow. You cannot wait until that sixth race to make a move. You've got to stay consistent. You've got to stay in that top five. Yeah, I mean, every point counts and every maneuver counts towards those points today. De La Pierre on board France. They've sailed pretty smoothly through this race, but has he turned the boat a little bit early here? I'm sure he probably knows better than me, but it doesn't look it's going to be easy to make it down through the gate from here. He needs to stay on the foils. He's got to be able to turn right on that mark in the middle of our screen. Turned a bit early for my liking. But he's just snuck it round. Great work by the French, and they stay on the foils. Should be okay for them from here. But yeah, big losers in this race, the Swiss. They were up to third, but they're back in sixth place now. How important would three, even one great. point, be, even at this stage of the regatta? Denmark, great performance by Sehested. Really made some nice gains around the race course here. And you've got to start thinking about big bounce backs in race number two, and you're looking at the USA and Australia, and of course, Spain, who looked so good in practice yesterday. Coming, coming, two. Nice by Sir Hester, just sneaks round. He needed to stay on the foils here, but they've moved through from the middle of the pack up to third place, overtaken New Zealand. That's going to be really, well, there you go. Anne-Marie Rindham at the back there, nice guys, and she's quite right. That's a big result for Denmark, good solid start. So the top three, Canada, France, and Denmark are home. They can now begin the debrief and prep for race two with two more races coming and valuable points on the line. And we'll see what New Zealand does to make changes. They were the first ones to maneuver after mark number one, and the Kiwis will finish in fourth. I think they'll be happy enough with that. They didn't have a great start. They got themselves right. out by making a big decision very early in the race. But, oh, here we go, tight. Switzerland has the right of way. Great Britain must keep clear. Oh. And they spin the boat. Watch out for that mark, Seb. It's coming up. Oh, it's tight. Surely a protest coming. Come on. This is the umpire's penalty GBR yeah. relative to oh. Switzerland. Oh, it's going to be interesting because how quickly is that penalty going to drop Leeward off? Mark. Ainsley, hand out. He's not happy. He's got to let the Swiss boat get back past him here. He needed to give more room at that. Top left, 16 minutes is the end of the race. Oh, that means we're going to go back to the last map. Oh, excuse for the industrial language on board the British boat there. That was just obviously the passion of the moment really, really came out for us there. So the race has been terminated as we've reached the 16 minutes. All we can tell you is that Canada came out of the gate hot, and Stevie, they never looked back. Emily, Canada was the class act, certainly, of race number one here in Dubai. Looking back at the start, by the time the gun went, all the boats were pretty close to the line. But it was the Kiwis and the Swiss that were on the foils early. The Swiss stayed towards the bottom of our screen, while the Kiwis decided to thread through the fleet down towards where the GBR team is. GBR then just slowed up the Kiwi team, which really affected their start. Meanwhile, it left a brilliant gap for this Canadian team that judged it perfectly, threading through the gap in the fleet and eventually hitting the line with full speed. Swiss and Canadians, perfect time and distance and straight to the mark. 
Bill Robertson threads the needle at the start and gets it done. Goes on to get the victory. Canada takes the win. France in second. Denmark in third. And race number two coming up next. Start in Mark 1 is going to be more important than normal. It's kind of your equivalent to a, a straight track in F1. You're right, it's going to be really tight. It's going to be incredibly exciting. It will come down to the manoeuvres, to the boats that can separate and find some space will probably be the ones that end up doing quite well. It was a, a super Grand Prix for the French team in Cadiz. An unbelievable energy with, uh, with all the team. The French team has to be really focused on, on San Francisco and, and be in the top three. You definitely need belief that you can get out there and you can win one of these race weekends. But we have a lot of work ahead of us. We have to climb quite a few positions to try and crack into that top three. So we don't have a choice. I mean, we just keep fighting our way back into the competition. We've built this team from zero, right from the bottom. And, and I guess when, when you've done that, you you feel it more, no? Uh, we really see SailGP as a huge opportunity, uh, probably the opportunity of, of our sailing career. Yeah, we're obviously frustrated from, from Kadith, but in saying that, we've learned a whole heap um, and we'll be a lot better as a unit because of it. We're really trying to play the long game and get better. And you know, we're, we're aiming at the season final. You know, we want to try and stop Tom from winning one. They've shown that they can win events, they're not afraid of the pressure, they're, they're going to step up to the plate. Pete and I are actually friends. Um, we do get along. didn't tell me that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the opposite to Well, me. I think we're friends, he might think otherwise. And the rivalries are good in sport, and we actually all get along quite well. This event is the first time I'll be driving with Nathan behind me. Yeah, we're very lucky to have Lauren. We, we wouldn't be able to sail with Nathan if she was not able to to be that strong and, and so good with the gym, jeep trimming. So, yeah, we're very fortunate to have her. Well, the key moment, if you didn't get a good start, was straight at Mark 1. And we see here, first boat to turn away was New Zealand. Peter Burling driving that boat. And he managed to find some space with that early move to get away from the fleet. He's never going to catch up with the Canadians. But I think the story of the day will be, if you're in the pack, how do you find space to use the speed of these boats, move your way back up the fleet? Because as we saw from Canada, if you find space in the lead, it's easy. But New Zealand found that space whilst in the pack and look at them. They were back of the fleet. They moved themselves right up to third with that one move. Couldn't catch Canada though. Great performance by Phil Robertson and his crew. Looking for more now. So the results from race number one, it is Canada on top at the 10 points. France, Denmark round out the top three with New Zealand, Switzerland. Really disappointing finishes for Great Britain, the USA, and Australia as they have meant to be top dogs battling for the overall title. Spain, after yesterday's great performance in practice yesterday, did not have the magic today. And a masterclass here from Canada shown in the numbers, average speed of 38 kilometers an hour and the shortest distance sailed. Goes to show that if you're out in front, you can sail the course you want. Meanwhile, the teams further back in the pack who were struggling for breeze from all the turbulent wind from the boats in front of them were sailing slower, longer distance and more maneuvers. All about making your foils work for you, having as much fly time as possible. Canada gets it done. We go on board with Phil Robertson. Phil, congratulations, and you do it in grand style, a dominating performance. Not only do you get your win, but you get the win in front of the owners. Fred Pye makes the trip here to Dubai. Yeah, it was obviously good. Um, yeah, as you sort of say, the key is getting off the start line, and we managed to sneak through a little hole there with the right timing, and once we sort of got around the bottom, bottom gates, it was... Uh, yeah, pretty easy from there, to be honest. Phil, do you go into that start box knowing exactly what you want to do, or are you more reacting? Because I saw on the left-hand side, you saw New Zealand and Great Britain getting into it, and again, it opened up for you like the Dead Sea. Uh, 
Yeah, look, we have a plan. Um, it was what we sort of executed, I would say, but only just, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, you have a plan and then you're reacting to what's going on around you and where everyone else is. Cheers, Phil. Thanks for the time. Good Copy. luck to you and the team. Not quite. Cheers, guys. So the Canadians get ready for race number two. It's a good opportunity for us to explain more about Sail GP to you. Our computer-generated graphics are seen on the F-50s as well as on broadcasts to define the boundaries of the course as well as the ladder lines covering whole legs. 100 meters apart, the ladder lets us measure each boat's progress up and down the course, who is ahead and behind the gaps between boats, the distance sailed from the last gate, and still to sail to the next gate. Well, the fans are out well, in I force. Well, I must have jinxed the wind saying it's nice and stable because it is getting quite fickle and making it really challenging for the sailors. It is a really hard decision to choose whether to sail away from where you want to go in order to pop off on the foils or try sail less. It's like being patient and really picking your timing to pop off on the foils in a good gust is, is really better than chasing your speed. There's meters in it out here. There's just meters in it out here. And every time the team's a lot more place chasers in the mid pack for race number two. All right, thank you very much, Lisa. As we go under two minutes to go, and as I was about to say, the fans are out in force. Some of them a little more happier than others, Stevie, as the Canadians are enjoying the start of this first day of racing here at the Dubai Sail Grand Prix, presented by P&O Marinas, 145. The start of race number two is interesting talking with Phil Robertson. You know, they go in with a plan, but that plan maybe gets thrown out the window as soon as they saw the opening that they had. Yeah, I think it's all very well having a plan for yourself, but you can only control what you can control. And as soon as, uh, you know, they often say a plan only lasts as long as first compact conflict. And, uh, and, you know, as soon as they get into the action, they've got to try and make the best of the situation they can. You can see now boats are already coming back. They're into their routine, but the wind is lighter out here, Todd. And it looks like we've got some spectators in the course, which is going to, uh, going to spice things up a little bit. It's a crucial day out there for the wing trimmers. They've got the big 29 meter wings on, which the team's all fairly new to still. And there's a big trade up between power and drag. So finding the right balance in the sail settings to make it go as fast as possible. Well, that super yacht really is the ultimate fly in the ointment right now as the foiling F-50s are trying yeah. to find their space and uh, get to the and line as, as we go it, under 50 down, seconds. We go on board with so Switzerland. Yep, what tilling low when you take off, mate. Just start gassing Canada on Australia. There you go, got Nathan in the background talking to Seb yeah, about the tactics. Laura Matro grinding here. And first up on the foils at Switzerland. Now, okay? Anticipate them turning left here to it's try and close off France and Denmark. Front. Switzerland and in control at the moment, but are they a little bit too early here? Out the back, Spain and USA. I think they may struggle to get there from here. And Great Britain, top of our screen, look really slow with just 18 seconds to go. Lines to the right outside. Ainsley on Great Britain, right near the pole position. But who's going to be up and foiling? No room for USA and Australia at the top here. Australia. Switzerland, they're all very close. Watch for the line to turn white. Who's got the timing here? Oh, perfect start by Denmark in the middle of the line. Jimmy Spittill somehow squeezed through and another bad start for Slingsby. Australia are going to struggle from here. Who can get on the foils first? Looks like Canada. Are they going to be able to use that to turn it into a lead at Mark 1? New Zealand, though, good start, bottom of the screen. Foiling, Denmark, foiling, Canada, foiling. It's going to be a sprint between these through three to see who will lead at Mark 1. Mark number one, race number two. Again, it is New Zealand, Canada, and Denmark in the mix. First for New Zealand there, good control. Denmark second, Canada third, but Great Britain there at the back, but they control things. New Denmark and Canada cannot turn until GBR do. Speeds here at the bottom there. Very similar speeds for these first four boats. They're in the same wind. Gate two, top of our screen. Expect the boats to turn soon. That boundary's coming fast. 
And once again, like in race number one, it's the Kiwis that turn away first, followed by Great Britain, Denmark, and Canada. It's really light, Todd. It's really, really light. All four boats fall off the foils here. Canada, oh, boundary penalty, Canada. Big mistake there. It got close, pressured out by the other boats. They need to lose 20 metres. How important will those 20 metres be as New Zealand are already foiling? I imagine we're going to hear a pretty calm Kiwi boat from here. Big lead already. Drive around it, yeah, yeah. Listening on board, New Zealand, Joe Alley there, eyes back. Super lift, we're gonna see if we've got enough speed to foil the first one, but we get to the lift in late. Probably H1 out of them. So we hear them there saying H1 out. That means they're not expecting to do a foiling maneuver in these conditions when it's marginal. If you go for a foiling maneuver and crash out, you're gonna lose heaps of speed. Well, if you commit to an H1 turn, you're going to yeah. drop down, kiss the water, yeah. hop back up. Yeah, nice. So, yes, the fly time H1 is lower. It's down at 80% so for New Zealand, one. but they yeah. know that they'll build their speed back up as quickly as possible. GBR, oh, down at 66%. They really need to work on that if they want to catch New Zealand here. H1. Right time might not be good, H1 but they're second. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that if I was behind yes. right now. As we see Australia and Spain once again out the back of the pack. It's really light winds, we can see that on the course. But New Zealand, well, what do they want to do here? They're going to do an extra turn. They prefer where the wind is here. One more turn, turn left, and then they're going to be heading away upwind. But that's a big, big lead. 150 metres ahead at gate two early in the race. This course is shorter, Todd, just four legs here. But it's light. It's going to be a bit of a trickle race here. Can they keep the boat moving? It's going to be tense times on board these F-50s, but at least if you're New Zealand, you should have a little bit of clear wind. Yeah, yeah. Happy battery take H1 here. Happy slow mode as well. Get in the... Get in the... Okay, fine, you go the other way. See there, Josh Jr., Blair 2, Pete Burling, all on screen there at the moment. Joe Alle watching the boats behind. GBR, one last turn here to follow behind New Zealand. They definitely all like the pressure on that side of the course. We're seeing all the teams doing this left-hand turn. So will this be a duplicate of race number one, this time with the Kiwis in the starring role instead of the Canadians, as they suffer a penalty on leg number two it's new zealand in first great britain in second and then the rest of the fleet with the danes coming in third that's where they finished in race number one but steve you talked about the wind is so light they are struggling to get one hole up out of the water yeah it's really dropped off and with these big 29 meter wings we can see that big wing sail there it just blocks it blocks the breeze and it gets even lighter when you're in the pack so we can see here true wind at just 11 kilometers an hour on new zealand there very similar wind on all the boats but if you're in the pack, you're going to yeah, have less wind. Right you've got again. less. You've got less options here. So it's really a case of trying to keep the boat moving, minimise the number of times you turn the boat, and see if you can find those extra patches of wind. We're seeing all the teams split their crew across the hull until that hull is flying. They're trying to get as much weight down, pop that windward hull. That's the hull closest to the wind out of the water get the less drag by having less boat in the water, and then they can bring the whole crew up and really push the boat forwards. Uh, depends a little bit. We'll just see how it feels here if you want it. Then Nikolai Sest in Denmark exploring their options. Remember these races, 16 minutes in length, so we could be looking at a suspended race here. And Stevie, if that's the case, you want to move up this leaderboard as fast as you can. Right now, it's New Zealand, Great Britain, Denmark, Canada, the winners of race number one and fourth, and the Americans sitting in fifth. Australia out the back again. Look at them, ninth place at the moment, struggling. They're sailing parallel to those ladder lines. That means they're not progressing towards the next gate at all at the moment. A little bit more wind on them now. They should start to move forward. But yeah, I think it's a bit of a race against the clock for New Zealand here. Can they get themselves up to this next gate to get a scoring point in? But USA, they've got some speed. They're in fifth and they're going quite quickly. pressure. Can't see the boy here, guys. So. Okay. 
Here we go, that's Paul Campbell James, Jimmy Spiddle there trying to find the course. And of course for Erica Ranke down there, left hand side of our screen, that's a big job for her to be looking out, keeping them well on the course. And we can see for USA it could well be two more turns, but big gains for Spittle. He needed them and he's made them when he needed to do it. And they've already shortened the course now to five legs. So remember, it's from seven to five legs and there's a 16 minute time limit as the Americans will make one more maneuver. The wind readings we're getting at the moment are showing that the, there's less wind at this gate at closer to the shore. Four kilometers an hour, less breeze down here. So these final maneuvers coming into the gate are crucial to try and keep speed up. Otherwise, the teams at the other gate, New Zealand, GBR, that gap is just going to increase even more. Kiwis need no more help as their lead continues to grow. So New Zealand out in front, Great Britain in second, Denmark in third, and then the rest of the fleet mired at the bottom of the course. Canada will just about survive that penalty. And well, look, here we go. Top of that huge New Zealand wing sail there. We can see there's plenty of wind up there with those red ribbons flying off the back of the sail there. New Zealand moving well, 160 meters ahead of second place Great Britain, but nearly half a kilometer ahead of third as they reach gate three. Kiwis ease around gate number three with a sizable lead over Great Britain. Remember, Great Britain finished in six, so a second for them would be fantastic. And there you see the rest of the fleet at the bottom of the course. Everyone compressing here as the wind has dropped down there. It is a race to get a hull out the water and maybe up onto the foils eventually. Trying to find the bridge. You see the wind coming up, the wind speed on the top of the American sail pushing 17 kilometers. Stevie, not quite enough to go foiling. No, and I wonder if this is Hail Mary time from Tom Slingsby on board Australia already. He's back in eighth place at the moment. Uh, board down. I'm not sure he can afford another yeah, one of these. Easy if he hopes to make the final. And trimming on, Sam. But now I'm third in the week. So. It's awfully quiet on board, the Australians. Remember, they are the two-time reigning and defending champions. They had a dreadful first race. They finished in eighth. And right now, they are sitting in the exact same spot in race number two with one more race scheduled on the day. The course has been shortened by two legs down to five, but the wind is really not cooperating. 15 kilometers an hour. Meanwhile, the Kiwis, they are gone. Kiwis foiled, top right of the mix. Here we go, they look like they've got pretty good speed to me here on board New Zealand. Well ahead, they've already passed the scoring race gate, so this race will count now. It just depends how far we can get through the race course. As we see at the moment, New Zealand already moving people down, trying to keep this left-hand side hull out the water. If you end up with two hulls in the water, it's a lot more drag, a lot slower. That's why you see the crew moving around. Top of screen, Great Britain, well, they were going fast, but Another turn to do for them as they try and avoid that boundary and look at the distances. You can see that the wind is actually fairly consistent in strength across the course. Canadians at the top of the screen have about 15 kilometers an hour of breeze and so do the Australians on this bottom part of the screen. So both able to achieve similar speeds, which will keep this racing really close in the pack. The battle up front with the Kiwis with a 200 meter lead on Great Britain, but you see the green on the top of the mast of Great Britain as okay, Ben is up to 32 yeah, kilometers an hour. It's gonna be hard to fall down here because it's so far. It's the voice of Blair Toop, wing trimmer on board New Zealand. He's talking about not really even trying to foil. They're not anticipating there being enough wind. For New Zealand, I think it's a case now, try and keep a decent bit of speed, minimize the distance you sail, and by doing that, you should be reducing the amount of risk you take relative to the opposition. But they're on their own. If there's no wind where they are, they could potentially lose a bit of distance. But they've just got one or two maneuvers as the next gate will be the finish. There, Blair Took thinks they can. He's made the call. Let's push for it. He was right. Okay, got it. They can get it up in the air. Good there for the New Zealand nice crew, place. New Zealand fans. This is the race committee. We are shortening this race course. Finish at gate four. Finish at gate four. 
Absolutely crucial here. Great Britain, left-hand side of screen. They are foiling, but it's New Zealand has the right of way. There's 200 metres to go to the finish, and it's anyone's race between these first two boats here. Can Ainsley stay on the foils? How many more times does each boat need to manoeuvre? I quite like where Great Britain's heading at the moment. It's going to be hard for New Zealand to hold the British boat off from here, I think. So much more boat speed on board Great Britain, and when they come together near the finish line, it will be Great Britain with the right of way. So Ben Ainsley makes an extra tack at the top of the course. Does it pay dividends here as we will find out? And it looks like New Zealand just barely keeping that other hole out of the water. Here we go. GBR trying to keep all of their momentum through this turn. 24 kilometers an hour bottom speed there. Mm, I think they might have this. Should be a win here for Great Britain from here. Great performance on this last downwind by Ainsley. Big, big gains. New Zealand are slow. Here we go. It's going to be Great Britain coming through the finish. And Great Britain takes the victory in race number two here in Dubai. They come from behind and just get the Kiwis at the line. Wouldn't get that far, mate. Yeah, we couldn't do much after that job. We made the wrong. So a great bounce back win for the Brits. They finish sixth in race Not number really, one. Actually, the Kiwis like will not. grab second place, going with their fourth from race number one. Still going to be frustrated on that New Zealand boat to let that one point yeah. slip. Every point does count. And when it's with one of your big rivals like Great Britain, that yeah. is going to hurt. They said they made a bad call back at the top of the course. And I think in these light conditions, you can make a decision three minutes ago that come yep. back to bite you because it's so hard to maneuver the boat around. Sehested, Denmark, well, they've been sailing well today. This could be another third place for them. We've seen how important and how hard to achieve consistency will be in these light winds. So good work by the Danish. Amazing, Emily, to see that New Zealand had a 200 meter lead on the second to last leg on Great Britain and Great Britain comes back and gets them. They found the win. It's all to play for out there. And there's still boats racing, there's still time left on the course, and Canada in fourth position now. They've already had good result today. Can they get yeah. back up into the top three and knock Denmark out of that podium position? Under three minutes to go in this race before it's suspended, we already have winners with Great Britain, New Zealand going one and two, and it looks like Denmark's going to get there into three to back up the third that they got in race number one. So the Danes are going to be looking very good, Stevie, going into the final race of the day with everyone hoping for a little bit of a sea breeze to fill in. Yeah, I mean, these uh, first three boats in this race here, New Zealand, Great Britain, Denmark, they're all going to be pretty happy so far with their start to things, all averaging top three positions. It's just Australia. Look at them. Left-hand side on our scoreboard there, ninth. Switzerland, they've dropped all the way back to eighth. It's pretty tricky. It's big points at this point. Phil Robertson's Canada. Well, he's kept himself in the race. And Jimmy Spittle, fifth place at the moment, but he's pressurizing the Canadians, going some four kilometers an hour faster at the moment. Can he find a way past? Well, this would be huge if the Americans could slide up a position. They got a seventh in race number one. A fourth would be much better than a fifth. Perhaps essential. Gives you a good idea of just how tight this course is today. Still standing to. And at 40 to go in this race. It's looking like they've got the boat going well. Can they get that hull up in the air? Can they make the boat heel over? Lean towards us. There you go. Should see a big acceleration in speed here, but he's not going to try and foil in this condition. Really clear comms yeah. there from Phil wheels. Robertson in Canada good, talking mate. about one person up, everybody back down, really working together to balance the heel down, of the boat, down. keep the hull flying. Good, He's even got the wing sheet though, look at that Negative improvisation forward, live on the scene oh, there, Phil Robertson. Yeah, He's trying to keep good, Chris good, Draper not even trimming the wing sail to keep that boat tipping up. Full commitment there. One minute to go before the clock terminates. Can Canada make it down to the finish? Come with a little squash here. Selfie. Nice, Billy. Make sure I don't lose the mode here. I think this is definitely the best thing to do. Trip. Lifting. 
multitasking onboard Canada as they try to bring this thing home with 30 seconds to go before termination as the Americans have dropped behind them by 100 meters. Does not look like Jimmy Spittle is going to have the time or the distance and wind pressure to catch him. But Canada need to cross the line before the race terminates or it goes back to the previous gate and the USA would finish ahead of Canada on that result. Final 10 seconds. Only you I don't think boat get there. can do it that quickly, Todd, yeah. I think. I don't think a boat's going to be able to make it in that time. 100 metres in 10 seconds, that's Olympic gold medal standard, and that's the time up, so it's going to go back to that last gate. Yep. It's a sigh from Phil Robertson. He knows what it means. Yep. So instead of a fourth and a first, Canada will take a fifth and a first with the Americans doing a nice job of coming back. They'll get a seventh in race one, a fourth in race two, with race three still to come. Wow, it was light and tense, wasn't it? And foiling was really quite rare during that race. So I think really that key moment was Great Britain. They managed to get on the foils. They took a bit of a short turn loss earlier on this final leg. But by doing that, they put themselves in a bit more wind and they turned that into a big, big gain as we move down the course. Good confidence boosting stuff for the British boat there because they needed that. They needed a race win. It's been a while since we've seen that from them. They'll be happy. Short term loss, long term gain. So Great Britain gets the victory in race number two. They had a sixth in race number one and one more race still to go. Great Britain, New Zealand, Denmark, the top three in race number two. We've got one more race to go here in Dubai. So two race complete and we bring you the results and what a performance once again by Great Britain despite the low wind they wait to the last leg and they get it done passing the Kiwis who had looked to be all but checked out in race number two here at the Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas. So officially it goes like this, Great Britain gets the win, New Zealand settles for second place, Denmark consistently finishing in third, and the Americans may be the biggest winners as the race is terminated, but they had the lead over Canada at the last gate, so they take fourth, Canada fifth, then it's France, Switzerland, Australia really struggling today, and then Spain in eighth place. So a lot of work to do with one more race to go, and remember, four races again tomorrow on Championship Sunday.
Well, it's been a tough season so far for the teams of Spain and Switzerland, but at least the young Spanish team with a race win in San Tropez and a third place in Cadiz have started showing they can be competitive. What a difference that has made to the team. But today, it has been a tough go for the Spanish here in Dubai. Jordi Jamar, first ever race, first to the line, huge statement of intent. And oh, It's the American boat and the Spanish boat, oh my, oh my lord! Goodness. As a driver, as a sailor, as a sports person, you just don't ever want to do that. After that collision, we're just there, paralyzed, thinking, okay, what's this now? Yeah, you can't be like that. As soon as you lose your confidence, people like myself, Peter Burling, Ben Ainsley, we can see that and we'll pounce on you. There's been an unbelievable 70,000 people turn out on the waterfront here in Cadiz. Spain's fighting for the victory. Geordie's sailing with a newfound confidence. The crowd's going crazy. Everyone's following them. There's boats everywhere. It's like they just won the world championship. Well, we had that beautiful seawall in Cadiz, but we have shore side racing here in Dubai. The sailors are literally could high five the crowds as they go past. But as we've seen, the wind has really dropped off from what was forecast, but they have a bit of a trick up their sleeve here in Sail GP. So they're going to go from six people on board from what we've seen down to four people on board. So what happens there is they lose a grinder. The female athlete moves into the grinding position and the flight controller also jumps off. So the pressure is on to the drivers to try get foiling, but I really think the only time they'll get foiling is around gate three and gate five. So, and of course on the start. So over to you guys to see who can get up and foiling before this start of race number three. So before we let you go, question to you, what do you think the strategy is? Who do you take off the boat? Who do you leave on? Well, in this wind, you don't need that much grinding power, but what we have to remember is that there is a huge wing that they're going to have to grind. And the rule is that they must have a female athlete on board. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Most teams will lose their flight controller and either the grinder, the male grinder normally, or the driver will fly the boat. So teams tend to have a different configuration in terms of who's flying the boat. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. And Lisa was right, Stevie and Emily. They are right in front of the VIP area. The fans getting up close and personal. Maybe the closest the fans have ever been in Sail GP history. It's really close in. And we saw the interesting shot. We see the Spanish to the right-hand side of our screen. And they've got Paula Barcello there. She is in the grinding position. She's a 49er FX crew, Olympian, double world champion, powerful can actually put that grinding down. It could be a good advantage for the Spanish, because right now, New Zealand, well, they had a good race, but Spain and Australia, for me, it's must-win time already this weekend. Australia and Spain have to win this race if they're to have any hope of making the final, I think. Meanwhile, if we look at the top of the scoreboard, currently we've got New Zealand, Denmark and Canada all tied on 16 points, with GBR then on 15 points. So our top four are really neck and neck. Still one more race to go today, obviously, but all to play for. Under two minutes to go for the start of the third and final race today. Remember, four races again tomorrow, and really it is a battle for points, Stevie, as we see the cruise ships and the skyline of Dubai in the distance. This is a different mode of racing. We're used to, and we love seeing them at high speeds hitting close to 100 kilometers an hour, but this is a different kind of strategy when you're just flowing, flying one hole and really making your way. It's, it's, a, it's a strategist's point of view. Yeah, it's a bit of a slow motion game of chess, really, but the, the board's moving. The moves you can do are limited a little bit because every time you turn the boat, the boat's going to slow down. But yeah, the positioning is already playing out now as we see Mel Roberts. The course for race three is five legs, axis is 350, wind is approximately 12 kilometers per hour. So Melanie Roberts, the race manager, giving the information. So the course has been shortened down to five legs. And the good news is we're hearing reports down on the water from Lisa that the wind tomorrow is likely to pick up to 24 kilometers an hour. So that'll be great. I think Mel Roberts might have a wish for windy glasses yeah. on at the moment because 12 kilometers an hour, I'm not sure it's that right at this moment in time. But we can see here, Australia, when they're out the back, they're going to struggle to get speed from there. We can hear the Australian boat at the moment. Sounds calm right now, but with 40 seconds to go, not sure how those Australians are going to find space. USA, 
They're in a good controlling position right now. Switzerland and Great Britain, they're down towards pole position. It's all about acceleration now, and who can make it? New Zealand, I do not see a gap for you in there. It's going to be tight for the Kiwi well, boat the here. Penalty Canada relative to GBR. Oh, there's going to be a crash. Clear. Oh, there's a crash between New Zealand and Canada. You could see that one coming a mile away. Here we go. USA at the top of the line. Denmark in a good position again. Can Spain find a gap through with seven seconds to go? How's your timing, Jimmy Spitto, at the top of the line here? Watch for the lines turn white. All clear. Some arguments in the middle there. It's going to be good news for Jimmy Spittle. Can he get the boat on the foil if the US boat... We see that. Here we go. The US boat's up in the air. They're going to start flying uh, towards umpire. Mark 1. Penalty Australia relative Canada. A windward boat not keeping clear. Tom Slink. Canada, you have an outstanding penalty. Furious. Things will be furious. He thought the Canadians had a penalty yep. and couldn't go into contact with him. He was wrong. Umpire Craig Mitchell's called it, and that's going to be so painful for Slingsby. Look, he's in second at the moment, but he's going to have to drop back. Oh, my Lord, that's a big penalty for Australia okay. here. Want to work some depth here if we can? And this could be massive for the United States as they have the lead at mark number one. Can they make a payoff? They're sitting on a seventh in race one, a fourth in race number two, a first in race three would be music to their ears. Australia, Todd, need to drop back behind Canada. Look at the damage that would do to them on the point score at the moment. USA sailing away from the fleet. The spectators on the far side of the course. Well, Switzerland turned the boat in the background. USA, they're up on the foils, and the United States turn. Silky smooth from Spittle. Can he do what every other leader yep. at Mark 1's done and turn it into a race win? Really tough there for USA. Just as they chose to do the manoeuvre, they entered the wash of a boat, which adds turbulence to the foils and would slow their manoeuvre down even more. Not what you want uh, at this stage in the race, but still leading. All teams sailing with just four crew members at this time. Third and final race of the day, we're just doing five legs because of the light wind. So, like, look, penalties on Canada and Australia, and that's just... Oh, that's so painful for those crews in these light winds. USA, there, look at the speed on them at the moment. Nearly 30 kilometers an hour, not quite fast enough to foil. And I don't think they're even going to try. What we see now, France, Great Britain, New Zealand, Denmark, struggling to find speed. And it's the Swiss boat first to break away. They're the ones perhaps challenging America at the moment. United States with Spido on the wheel. Pretty calm there. That's Campbell James, the wing trimmer, talking to Jimmy Spittle, talking about how he wants him to sail. Do I want you to go fast? Do I want you to go less distance, but a bit slower? Australia, have a look at them, Todd, in the background there. 40 kilometers an hour up on the Ooh. foils. They've cleared the penalty. Slingsby's found some speed, and he's back in the race. He needs to make a move happen here as he turns the boat. They're off the foil. Oh, it's fallen off the foils. He's got himself back in the pack. Talk to us, Kenley. Canada still with the penalty here, really struggling to slow down enough to let the boats behind then pass them. Not the speeds we're normally used to seeing here at Sail GP. And again, the wind is supposed to build for tomorrow, so expect higher winds. Whether they change the boards, we will see. Spain in the background there, up on the foils. Meanwhile, further ahead on the course, GBR is still one hole down. This could see the fleet compress a bit more, have those teams in the back half move up forwards and really put some pressure on the leading teams right now. Better pressure in America. Every guy before. Like it could be a good move for Ainsley. He likes the win. And they talk about pressure. They're talking about wind speed. If you can find that little bit more wind speed, you go faster. An extra kilometre an hour of wind makes a big difference. USA have the right of way. Is Ainsley ahead? It's going to be tight here. He's going to sneak across in front. Clear across here. No problem. Pretty confident. That's Ben Ainsley telling Craig Mitchell. I imagine a protest coming here from the USA there. That was very, very tight. No protest yeah. at all there. That really just was tight. Yeah. yeah, find an extra kilometer, two kilometers an hour of wind. It can be as much as four kilometers an hour more boat speed. So for the drivers on board the boat, looking out for that pressure, as they call it, absolutely crucial. 
25% fly time for USA versus 0% for GBR, but they are still neck and neck. This is showing their two different modes of sailing. The US pushing more for speed, but sailing longer distances, while the British team tend to straight aim straight for the mark a bit more today. Almost jiving. It's just a big riding. Good job, good job, man. Get board up, Jimmy. No, no. And then oh, yeah, down. Listen in yeah. with the American boat. Do you turn the mark? Yeah, no problem. You'll need wing to lure it as well, please. Are you coming under pressure after this? <laughs> you could hear wow, the tension. a lot of work. Oh, your wing? My wing? My wheel. Come up there. And we've got a split, Todd. Right turn for USA, no, left America. turn for Great Britain. Four-person crew on all the boats across the board. This is like three of five. The third and final race of the day with the Americans in the league. Great Britain has now overtaken them on course. Can they hold it? Feels like the breeze has gone left a bit here. So he's saying there, the, boat, the wind's rotated to the left a little bit, Ainsley. He's showing us being in the lead at the moment. Traditionally, heading towards all those spectator boats has been a good move, but the wind's really dropped. Who can find more wind? Currently, the US in 13 kilometers an hour of wind versus the British team in only eight. So, will the US be able to keep this higher speed or is it going to drop off towards this side of the course? Numbers constantly changing. You see at the top there, the wind speed across the course, averaging under 12 kilometers an hour. Great Britain holding that very small lead. USA in second, Switzerland in third, France in fourth. Still so close for this pack in the middle. <laughs> Switzerland narrowly crossing the boats coming the other way, but all right now there. Nice work, Australia and New Zealand showing us eighth and ninth at the side. moment. That would be disastrous for our two people at the top of the overall season leaderboard at the okay. moment. Big Not moment for Switzerland. And remember, it's a 16-minute race, so we're probably looking at termination yet again. So the Here's Americans from Great down, Britain uh, uh, pretty much James checked out this one, Stevie. Everyone's now trying to log in a top five position. Yeah, nothing on screen for New Zealand. They're going to come in for the left-hand side of our yep. shot here. Starting. Have they managed to find Third a little left. magic bit of wind? They're not going to have... No, they're behind everyone here. Switzerland yep, so, will yep. get round third, and most of the boats are preferring to turn left here and head back towards the spectator fleet. And That's where the they wing. think they the found wing. more wind as they come down. But New Zealand, they're on the left at the moment, but they're going to struggle to have the right of way yeah. at this mark. They could find themselves locked out here. Australia inside the yellow circle, New Zealand are not entitled to room relative to Australia. This is going to get really, really tight as De La Pierre tries to find space on the right-hand side. And just creeping around the gate is Switzerland. Spain going to the inside. Did they find enough room? They've got no room in there, Spain, but I think Switzerland's made a bit of a wide turning. They open the door. Bit of a mistake by Schneider there, driving the boat. As France there, really slow. Australia creep round in seventh. Who's going to get the boats up to speed again quickest after this gate? And look at Denmark. Look how close Denmark is to France on the other side. Denmark must give France room to get round there, but as soon as they leave the mark, France needs to make sure he's a safe distance away from Denmark. And out the back, New Zealand, Burling's going to need to find something magic. Well, the Kiwis were coming in hot there with more speed, but that left side was too crowded, so they opted the other side as we bounce back from fifth through ninth back to the top of the course, and that's where we find USA and Great Britain locked in a good one. Great Britain has overtaken the USA as they make their way around the next gate. Pressure's still aside, isn't it? I don't think it's foiling. Still preferring that side of the course where the spectator fleet are. Hence, the United States boat turns straight away and they're going to start aiming back at those spectators. Ainsley's led him off the leash a little bit here. Will that prove costly in the long run? I'm surprised Ainsley let the USA yeah. 
make that turn first. Because isn't this similar what Great Britain did to the Kiwis in the last race? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. We can see already popping up there on the foils is the United States and Jimmy Spittill. Could have been a move by the US to take the race. Ainsley, I'm surprised he let that happen, but plenty of golf left in this hole here. It's this final downwind is going to be nip and tuck between two of them. Best match race helmsman in the world. USA up on the foils there. GBR still struggling for that last little bit of speed to pop up. Here we're looking at the previous leg uh, where we've got GBR sailing less distance, but USA sailing a higher average speed. That did let GBR cross them, but now that extra speed is paying. And we're just hearing from race manager Melanie Roberts that the race has been shortened yet again down to three legs, so they will finish at the windward gate. So great news for USA Sail GP at the opportune time. Great Britain may be found on the outside, and here's this maneuver. Can they keep it on the foils? No, they cannot. It's just too light to be trying to force that. They've done a nice smooth turn there. Todd, they have the right of way. Great Britain will have to keep clear here. If this is close, it's going to go. Let's have a look at the bottom. Oh, he's a clear ahead. One more turn by Great Britain. Classic match racing manoeuvre, but can they accelerate or will the United States move past? So we're just hearing that the race has been finished at the previous gate, but these two don't know it. They are locked in a matchup right now. Well, this means it's a tight finish at the top here for the Swiss with the short. Of course, Great Britain won that race. As we see Switzerland, it could be an invaluable third. And Tom Slinsby, how's he found his way up to fourth? Absolutely crucial points at the end of the race here. Switzerland third. Good performance by them. Tom Slingsby's Australia. Wow, he maybe has given himself a lifeline by getting back to fourth there. Look how tight it is in the pack. Oh, the big losers could be Denmark. It's tight. Spain come through. It's tight. On the line, New Zealand and France. These points will be crucial. Who's going to get there first? Ooh. Photo five, give it to the French, but we're going to probably have to go to a photo finish for that. And wow, Canada, they get back for an eighth and nine. that's really shaken up the leaderboard, that last race, Todd. So confusion across the course as the course was shortened from seven to five and then down to three. We can confirm unofficially at this point that Great Britain has won the race in race three. The USA finishing in second place and Switzerland finishing in third. So because of the light wind, they shorten the race down to three legs, Stevie. And it's amazing how the USA and Great Britain did not get that word and they continued on with the race. And it looked like the Americans were going to have the advantage. Yeah, it did. It was some tense moment. But uh, anyway, still for me, really did come back to that start. And here's a quick look at that start and all the drama that did happen. So Canada caused a bit of a hiccup in this start here where they tried to thread the gap with GBR, but it didn't quite happen. They ended up taking out New Zealand, causing a collision, which is where their penalty came from that they were left with for most of the race. Meanwhile, the USA team at the bottom of the screen here, because of the pileup, then were able to have this big gap that they could accelerate into, especially with the French team being late led to a clear start for the US team who were able to power over the rest of the fleet and get to Mark 1 first. Well, it wasn't the most dynamic race we've seen in CLGP, but it does go official. And once again, Great Britain finds a way to get it done as Ben Ainsley and company get the victory in race three to back up their win in race number two. The USA with a beautiful bounce back to wrap up day number one as they finish in second place to go with their seventh and fourth. Switzerland in third, Australia coming home in fourth and salvaging some points for the two-time reigning and defending champions. Spain having their best finish of the day, finishing in fifth. Then France, New Zealand really struggling as they'll finish in seventh. And the winners of race number one, Canada, finishing in eighth ahead of Denmark in ninth. And here we've got the USA team sailing at fastest speed on average across the course, 23 kilometers an hour but it was the Great Britain team that sailed the least amount of distance. Identical maneuvers, Great Britain was 0% fly time, but they committed to that mode of sailing the shortest distance possible, aiming straight at the marks, and ultimately, that's what won them this race.
Wow, what a hectic finish on race number three as the course goes from seven to five down to three legs. The big winners on the day have got to be Great Britain as we take you on board. Ben, congratulations. Give us an idea of what it was like out there with that light wind. Hi, Ben. I don't know if you can hear us. There seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of spectators. Very, very pleased to see you out there on the water in Dubai. Two race wins at the end of the day. Looked pretty tight and tactical. How was it out on the water there, Ben? Uh, it's really tough out there. You can see that. The breeze just died off to the point we had to go down to four crew. And it's just all about trying to keep the boat speed going, trying to avoid getting locked up with the other boats. That, that last start was, was really tight. And the team did a really good job trying to keep cool in these really hot temperatures. It's, uh, it's, it's just as hard in these conditions as it is in, you know, 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers now wind speed. Two comebacks for you today, Ben, in race two and then in race three. When did you finally get the word in race three that the race had been shortened to the third gate and you guys had beaten the U.S.? Yeah, I, I, we were relieved with that because they'd done a nice job actually driving earlier and getting slightly better pressure down the uh, the left-hand side of the downwind leg looking downwind, so they were probably going to get past us, so we were happy with that. Uh, we'll, take, we'll take that one our way. Well, potentially a bit of a different day out there tomorrow, Ben, and there's been a few rumours of potential boat speed issues on board that British boat. Are you, are you confident the boat's fast and good because you've been sailing well the last uh, few races? Yeah, I, I think the boat's... The boat's fine. It's it's the operator operator errors they say. I mean, there's a few little asymmetries we're working on, but I think all of the boats in the fleet probably have those. And it's just about trying to sort of tweak those along as we go. You know, it's a one design fleet, so everything's the same. It's just about how you set it up and how you operate it. Ben, appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck tomorrow on day two. So from Great Britain, we bounce over to the USA. They finish in second place in race number three. Jimmy Spithill and company doing a great job at the end of the day. Hey, Jimmy, it's, it's not the way you wanted to start. You guys get a seventh in race one. You come back with a fourth in race two. But what a way to finish off day number one with a second to Great Britain. Give us an idea of what it was like there on the course today. Yeah, really, really tough out there on the course. Uh, very light, real minefield. Um, I mean, clearly we should have dropped the crew for race two. I just don't know why the race committee's late every time making that call. But yeah, look, I thought the guys did good. We, we just struggled off the first start. I mean, that was all me. And uh, only just got it together in the last one. So we've got a lot of work to do, but it was good to be going, building the momentum and heading the right direction there. It looks like a bit of a street fighters course out there, Jimmy, which seems to suit you. You seem to like a bit of a scrap. And, you know, despite that day, you're actually sat in second at the end of day one. But is it looking a bit different for tomorrow? How does your strategy change going into the Sunday? Yeah, the latest forecast we got was actually really good breeze. Like, they're actually talking about a wing change, going to the middle size wing, uh, so which that would mean we just re really wouldn't take too many lessons from today. We'd really be focusing on all our sailing with the middle wing. But, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see what the forecast dishes up. But, yeah, on this sort of a course, it's just a constant battle with every other team out there because it's just very difficult to get any separation. Jimmy, appreciate the time. Wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Jimmy Spittle and company looking for a big day tomorrow to see if they can pick up another win in Sail GP to back up their victory in San Tropez. So we now turn our attention to tomorrow, Sunday Championship Sunday, three more races plus the podium race. Emily, give us an idea. Give us a boat that we should keep an eye on. The boat that I think we should keep our eye on tomorrow is Canada. Now, they started with a bang today, taking the win in the first race. They then had a fifth, which was a bit disappointing, and a ninth in the third race. But that ninth was caused by a penalty at the start, where, once again, Phil Robertson was really pushing for every single point. So, if they come in with that attitude tomorrow, I'm expecting big things. And Fred Pye would love to see his team in the big final, the fourth race tomorrow on Championship Sunday. Well, that definitely was a different type of intensity than we expected. But the great news is that things are going to heat up tomorrow as, as we heard. Uh, with the breeze increasing on this condensed race course, uh, 
sideline crowds to get the show that they're expecting and the winds are expected to be averaging 22 kilometers per hour gusting up to 37 heard from the head of the tech team that as Jimmy alluded to we will change from those 29 meter winds down to 24 meter expected on the race course and hopefully a very exciting day two of racing here in Dubai. And throwing back to one of the highlights of today, taking a look at one of the Great Britain team's comebacks. They kept us right on the edge of the seat with a lot of the racing today, taking the win in the final moments of the race. The Kiwis had led for the entire race and final leg. The Brits come in and steal the show. They then did the same thing in race three, pushing the US team right to the finish. Well, it wasn't the most dynamic of finishes for Great Britain or the USA, but all it counts is they get the win with the Americans finishing second. All right, Stevie, let's break down oh. these numbers. Great Britain didn't have a great first race, but look how they bounce back and look at that pays off. Look at that lead. Yeah, I mean, two firsts there at the last two races of the day for Great Britain. And well, what I'm looking at is on the far right, the overall points. Yep. 20 points for the second place boat, seventh place boat on 18th. Nothing in it, but Australia tomorrow morning have to come out and win the first two races to have any hope of making the final for me. It'll be all on tomorrow, three fleet races and then the podium race. Well, here we go. The start line was really the defining moment of the day. This first start was spectacular. Seven of the boats absolutely on the money with their starting. It was Phil Robertson nailed that start. And earlier in the day, it was a little bit more foiling breeze. There was a few more tactical opportunities. And as Phil Robertson stretched away, New Zealand looked for space. And actually from back in the pack, it was New Zealand that moved through and caught up a little bit, but a masterclass from Canada up on the foils here. Race two, well, the wind started to drop. Jimmy Spinner was fairly uh, fairly direct about the right race management in this race, and they could have got four people on the boat because we saw all the boats starting to not be able to foil, sailing with one in the water. Much lower boat speeds out there in this lighter conditions, but if you got on the foils, as Great Britain did on this last downwind leg, they managed to separate from New Zealand, use the extra boat speed from the foiling to turn it into a race win, and well, started a great role for Ben Ainsley and his crew. Race three, again, the start. Well, there was a bit of collision. There's going to be some ramifications for that, I'm sure, overnight. Hopefully not too much work for the tech team, as we see New Zealand just got sandwiched out by Canada. It was a penalty for Phil Robertson, perhaps a little bit too aggressive. And then here, we thought this was going to be a defining moment for USA. Ben Ainsley thought it was going to be a defining moment for the United States. But when the boats came back together, it turned out the race had run short. This match racing maneuver here by Ainsley on his old buddy Jimmy Spittle didn't matter. It was that kind of tight maneuvering that gave us some good close action out on the water here today. So we turn our attentions to day number two, Dubai Sail Grand Prix, presented by P&L Marines. We check in with everyone to get their thoughts. We'll start with Lisa Darmanin down on the water. Lisa, what are you expecting tomorrow for day two? I think it's going to be a really interesting day tomorrow with the big breeze. I think that it's actually going to really shake up the points. As you said, race number one and two tomorrow are going to be critical, but I wouldn't count anyone out because if we have that breeze, it's going to be a completely different style of racing tomorrow. And for you, Emily. I think gate two is going to be where it's at tomorrow. Right off of the wall, the Adrenaline Lounge is going to be the place to watch because all of the boats are going to be coming in foiling and causing some carnage. And Stevie. Well, if it is a bit windier tomorrow, this short course, I suggest those grinders eat their weedy bix because they're going to have a busy, busy day out there on the water. So the debriefing begins as Championship Sunday will kick off tomorrow. We want to remind you, same time, same place, the Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by Pino Marinas will go on. We'll have three fleet races and then it'll be the podium race where only the top three teams will compete for the big prize and walking away with the title. So on behalf of Lisa Darmanin, Emily Nagel and Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris saying goodbye from now. We will see you tomorrow, the big showdown in Dubai Sail GP Season 3. Really good form right now. Wow, Switzerland on the money.
foiling. Denmark foiling. Canada foiling. They are dominating. There they are, out in front. 